Hi, this is Taylor Otwell, and I'm back with another Laravel screencast. And what I want to dive into today is the Laravel IOC container. IOC stands for Inversion of Control Container, and uh, Inversion of Control is a software design pattern, and the purpose of the container is to make implementing that pattern much more easy, uh, much easier for you, much more convenient to manage these dependencies. Because building a um, highly injected application and managing those dependencies manually can become pretty cumbersome. So before we dive in and look at the awesome ways this can make your application much more flexible, much more testable, let's just look at the basics of the IOC container for those who may not be aware. Um, the IOC container has been around in Laravel 3, but uh, you know you might not have run into it if you haven't uh, been doing a lot of dependency injection. You might not even be aware of what it can do for you. So let's look at the basics. I've actually already got a very simple binding already coded. What I'm doing is calling app bind in Laravel 4. Your entire application or the application object is an IOC container. It extends the container class. So I can call IOC container methods off this app instance. I'm saying app bind foo, which is a key for accessing this uh, container binding. And I'm passing in a closure, which returns Taylor. Now, the way I can use this is by saying, let's just get rid of this uh, make hello, is I can say dive our dump app make foo. So let's just see what that gives us. I'm saying give me an instance of foo, whatever that is keyed to. So if we hit this in our browser, we should see Taylor because that's what foo should return. Whoop, not found. Whoops, I got the wrong URI. All right, there's Taylor. There's our string. So this binding is working as expected. And like I said, this is a very basic binding. This isn't really something you would probably use in a typical application, but it just shows you what you can do. Now, what you return from here doesn't have to be a string. It could be an object, which is much more realistic. So let's take a look at that. Now, let's say we have a class called, uh, how about, I don't know, user repository. Let's go ahead and just leave this guy empty for now. Now from here, let's say return new user repository. Okay, so now when we ask for foo, we should get an instance of the user repository object. All right, let's go ahead and give that a shot. User repository, good. So now we're returning our user repository instance as expected. Okay, great, let's try something else. Let's try var dumping app make foo twice. Let's see what this gives us. Whoops. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, now we get two instances of the user repository, so we can just keep calling that as much as we want, and uh, it will just keep returning those instances to us, so no problem here. Now, another thing you can do with the IOC container is say you already have an instance like this. We can say app instance foo and give it an instance that already exists. Now it will just always pass back that instance. It won't try to create its own. So when we hit our route, you'll see that we're getting our object user repository. And uh, this is useful if you already have an instance. You don't actually want it to create a new one every time. Okay, so now moving on, let's do something a little more complicated. Let's go back to our closure setup here. Now let's say the user repository has some dependency. All right, maybe he depends on something, let's say. And we're just gonna set our variable. Public something, actually let's just make this protected. And uh, let's define an empty something class. All right, and now in our container, we're gonna pass in new something. Our user repository now has this dependency. So now this is a little more beneficial in that uh, this is less verbose to make an instance of the user repository. We can just say app make foo instead of uh, always passing in these dependencies, which is you know pretty cumbersome to remember. Also, if we added new dependencies, we'd have to change our code everywhere. Whereas with just using app make, we uh, can always be sure we're getting a correct instance. So let's go ahead and var dump this. You can see we did get our user repository instance and it also passed in the child object. So we're looking good here. Now, this works okay. You know, it's a little cumbersome though to have to define all of these bindings. You know, we'd probably have a huge file full of bindings and uh, that could get a little bit of a, a little bit painful to maintain. It'd be great if our IOC container automatically could resolve these bindings for us. 
And that's actually possible in Laravel using PHP reflection. So the IOC container actually is smart enough to look at this constructor and say, hey, he needs an instance of something. I'll go ahead and pass that in. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's just get rid of this binding entirely. And we're still going to say app make, but instead of foo, let's just say user repository, which is the name of the class. Now I'm asking the IOC container to make an instance of this class. And let's see what we get back here you can see we get the exact same thing. So the IOC container was smart enough to look at this constructor, say, hey, he needs an instance of something and automatically pass that in for us. We didn't have to manage that constructor. Now, let's look at another, a little bit more uh, powerful example. Say all of a sudden our user, user repository has a new dependency. He needs something else as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and set him. something else protected something else let's go ahead and define that class all right now notice since we're using our IOC container we don't need to change anything here the way we use this or we get an instance of this hasn't changed so just because we added a dependency it's automatically going to be resolved for us there it is right there we didn't have to manually pass in the new dependency in our code it was automatically resolved using reflection so it's it's really just awesome to work with makes your code much easier to maintain and this right here is called the service locator pattern, the way we're just using the IOC container in our route like this. And sometimes you may want to do this. However, there's an even better way to get your dependencies into your classes called de uh, dependency injection. And we can do that on many different things in Laravel, including your controllers, which is going to make your applications much more flexible, much more testable, and is what I'll be showing you in the next screencast.